Welcome back to my place with a fresh walkthrough video for my latest demo, Time Is Now. This track features all of the latest installments to Steinberg's virtual instrument and sound pack, Absolute 5. To name just a few, the amazing drum resynthesizer, Backbone, Amped Electra, a beautiful electric piano from the 70s, and electric bass. Many people are asking me if they should buy Absolute 5 or not, and I have to say absolutely yes. I'm very happy today to show you the capabilities of this amazing collection. Let's have some fun and let's jump right into the session. As usual, I've tried to organize things as clear as possible. On top of the session, you see Amped Electra, followed up by Electric Bass, Olympus Choir and the Beat Agent expansion Future Past Perfect. The other instruments and expansions I've put into subfolders you, so you can clearly see at any time which sound belongs to a certain instrument or expansion. Polarities and granular guitars are expansions for patch up too. Backbone I've already mentioned, while Sounds of Soul is a cool expansion for Retrolog 2. All of the orchestral colors are coming from the good old Halion Symphonic Orchestra that you can see down here. But first of all, let's have a first listen to Time Is Now. With this demo, I wanted to create a superhero theme with a little retro touch in it, not focusing so much on the epic aspect of blockbuster superhero movies. I concentrated on the new instruments and expansions in Absolute 5, but still added a few of the other sounds in the package to give you a glimpse of what endless possibilities you have at hands with Absolute 5. Let's start right ahead with the latest instrument, Amped Electra. One of the key elements of the track is this broken chord figure that appears right after the atmospheric intro part.
Amped Electra is the sampled version of a Hona Electra electric piano from the 70s, which has an amazing character and a very soulful tone. As you can see, the organization of the macro is very simple and ready to play. You have the instrument page where you can find the different amps, the DI signal and the sound knobs. By the way, all of the three amps are sampled from the originals, not modeled or created synthetically. The tube is an Ampeg V4. The tower is a very cool amp from the 50s and the twins is a 70s Fender Twins Reverb amp. Actually, this amp I used for this sound. On the effects page, you have four slots on different effects you can shape your sound with. It's very intuitive and never comes in the way of your musical flow. I really like this instrument. The rhythm sounds quite odd, but as you can see, the steady four quarter beat goes right through, but the pattern is structured in this 4 plus 4 plus 6 figure and creates the illusion of an odd meter groove. The harmonic progression is laid out by changing only the third note of the 4 note chord and moving downwards chromatically. The Outrigger instance of Amped Electra creates an interesting effect. I've called it Outrigger because the sound makes use of a stereo effect via the tremolo effect. While the phase is set to 180 degrees and the rate set to one quarter and sync tempo, it seems like the signal jumps from left to right, which makes some room for the other instruments and supports the odd meter illusion of the chord figure. Let's listen to this very subtle effect while soloing the part and switching the tremolo off from time to time. Let's add another nice instrument to the amped electra part, the electric bass. For this piece, I simply used the clean DI signal and the J bass pickup. What you can see is that the instrument, while being very complex with lots of articulations and amps and stuff, still comes along quite simple. You can just start playing. It's something I find very important with virtual instruments, that they don't interfere with my musical flow, that they keep me playing, that they feel like being on an exploration ride instead of studying tech sheets and watching in-depth tutorials before you even play your first note. What you also hear is how smoothly both Amped Electra and Electric Bass go together. Check this out. See? A really cool out-of-the-box sound. The banding effect, by the way, is simply done with a pitch band wheel. Mm. 
Let's now add the white organ from the Pet Shop expansion Polarities. It's a typical layer sound to enrich the Amped Electra foundation. The sound itself is cool, but together with Amped Electra it forms something very special that helps to drag the listener into this retro superhero movie kind of world that I had in mind. Let's now have a look at the orchestra section, which actually in this track consists mainly of spiccato strings and brass. For the strings, I created a rack instance of Halion 6 and dragged in all the spiccato patches I needed. Two things are remarkable for this good old library. First is that there are AB sections for violins, violas and celli, which helps a lot to create dimension if needed. Second is the up bow down bow feature that you can see here. It's triggered via a key switch and you can create stunning performances with this feature. Let's look how I did this within the string section. You can easily see how the key switch triggers every first note of the chord with a down bow to emphasize these notes and to strengthen the groove. By the way, Halion Symphonic Orchestra was the very first orchestra library I bought when I was starting out working as a professional media composer. If I remember correctly, this must have been around 2006 or so. 15 years later, the library still sounds good and it was quite funny for me meeting my younger self while working with these samples again. Two last additions to the part come from Polarities again. First is the ARP pad and the STAP bass. Let's start with ARP pad. and the step bass sound. Interesting about the ARP pad sound is that it adds dimension as well as rhythm. Let's listen to the part with these two sounds. Cool about the step bass is that it is as well an impact as a riser towards the end. I emphasize this effect by the automation of the loudness. Let's now head over to the first main part where all the other interesting instruments come in. Let's first look at Future Past Perfect, the Groove Agent expansion added to Absolute 5. To demonstrate the sound in its pure essence, I didn't change anything on this preset. I just chose Sue's as my favorite kit for this track and started playing.
again, but now only the Seuss kit. Interesting, right? Normally I do it the opposite way, first the soloed sound, then within the mix, but what you realize now is how the music is mirrored in the drum kit and helps it developing in the field of rhythm. Let's briefly look at what I did to the loop. I routed the loop to bus 4 and added the morph filter on top to get this high cut filter effect for the break before the second main part. It's really fun working with these presets in Groove Agent because as well, this is, in its very own way, a very versatile and creative instrument. It allows you to do everything you want right in the box. You don't have to leave the instrument and open external effects. You can just ride on your creative way very intuitively. This is the original sample, and with a more filter. Now is the time to introduce my personal main argument why to buy Absolute 5. Backbone. I've used Backbone in several of my other demos and videos, so you may have a look at them too. Very brief summary here. Backbone is a drum resynthesizer enabling you to divide your samples into a tonal and a noise part. Apart from that, you can tweak these layers in some very unique and cool ways. Let's look down here for the toms and snares instances, delivering some modern cinematic percussion for the track. For a demonstration, let's have a brief look at the Tom's Fat instance. As you can see, I chose two samples from the library coming alongside with Backbone and created my own patch, making heavy use of my favorite feature, the Resynth. Let's skip through the layers and listen to what happens when deactivating the Resynth section. Important is the panning of the two noise samples to create some dimension and make the sound bigger. You can see it here, panning to right, and here, panning to the opposite. In this case, uh, 71 compared to, if I remember correctly, 68, yes. Another trick to making the sound more natural is the cutoff in the filter section being triggered by velocity. So the tom sounds more damped in the lower vol velocity range and crispy at high velocity. Thickened by the deep and synth tom instances, the groove sounds like this.
when adding the snares, the section sounds even bigger. Again, within the whole mix. Apart from these sample shaping features, Backbone delivers all the sweet little add-ons to the track like booms, blasts, whooshes and transitions, all of them being part of the library of presets coming along with Backbone. As you may have recognized, in the main part the original Amped Electra figure is layered with two other additional sounds, glass piano and strings fat lead. Let's start with glass piano. And the strings. You can hear and see that the string's fat lead layer brings in some extra life with the help of the volume automation. I also did that to fill the gaps while the melody stays on the longer notes. You can see that if you look at the automation in connection to the lead down here. Interesting thing with the new combination of layers in the main part is that all other sounds apart from the original Amped Electra play one octave higher. That helps opening things up for the new section as well as making some room for the melody that appears here for the first time. That's a thing that I find very important to pay attention on the melody making the best performance possible in the given situation. Another aspect adding some variation to the original figure is these little randomly played variations of the original rhythmical pattern. here. There was the first variation. There the other one. Again. Coming back to the original combination at the end. It's one of those things you won't ever recognize but feel within the music. It creates the image of a longer phrase while still sounding repetitive and pulsating. Now that I've already mentioned the melody, let's look at the combination for the main theme here. The most recognizable of the two is this adorable theremin-like Be Good To You flute lead sound from the Sounds of Soul expansion. Of course, it's quite far away from an original theremin, but I wanted some of this retro vibe within the melody.
To enrich the sound and to connect the melody to the orchestra colors, the horns double the melody one octave lower. Funny, right? So low, the horns sound like eh, you could never leave it this way. But let's listen to the part again with all the other stuff. <laughs> A little last aspect concerning melody in the second main part, which is the climax part with a peak of intensity. In this part, the violins take over the counterpoint figure that first appeared in the lower strings in the first main part and derive a new melody out of it. Let's check that out. again within the mix. During the second half of this part, two string pad sounds appear, strings fat and strings airy. Let's start with the strings fat. And strings airy. A very nice combination that adds richness and drama to the last climax part. When it comes to mixing, it was important for these pad sounds not overwhelming things in the mix, so I just cleaned up the bottom end with a low cut to still leave the basses room to breathe. One bass sound I wanted to mention. Metal bass with a corresponding preset named Atomic Metal Bass. I just created an arpeggiator pattern supporting the accent notes of the groove. The two other instances are for the melodic break at the end of the melody and the five quarter beats at the end of the main part. Just for remembrance, all the sounds I've been talking about the last minutes are coming from the Sounds of Soul expansion for Retrolog 2, coming along with the new Absolute 5 collection. I can't say this often enough. Retrolog is such a flexible synth that it's very easy to use, once you are familiar with how synths work, of course. One last thing while we are again already heading towards the end of this video, the 
intro part where Olympus Choir Micro has its little but beautiful appearance. Let's do a little comparison with uh, my originally programmed version of the intro part using both the Gregorian and the Ligato U patches. Now that the project file is online for you all, you may check out what version is your favorite. The lead shadow distance sound comes from the polarities expansion and works great together with the choir. Embedding sound for the choir and the lead is the flautando drone from the Granular Guitars expansion for Patch Up, also a part of Absolute 5. Okay, there we are at the very end of this walkthrough video. I hope you've enjoyed the ride and this insight into the latest version of Absolute 5. Go ahead and download the project file to check out things for yourself or feel free to watch my other videos. I hope seeing you all again soon. Bye bye.